Well, as I mentioned, somebody who who always features in these Boys Town charts is Divine, who you have probably seen as a female impersonator, but here is a rare chance to see you out of makeup. Divine, thanks very much for talking to us out of your dresses oh, and eyelashes. What what exactly do you see yourself as? I mean, I'm saying you're featuring very much in these essentially gay charts, but do you see yourself as something more? Well, I mean, I see myself as an entertainer. I mean, anyone that wants to listen to me, I'm glad to have them as a fan and as a listener. I mean, I've been on the the, the other charts too. I mean, in the Sweden and Germany and Holland on the main charts. Uh, in London, I think, uh, though in England, um, mainly on the, the Boys Town charts, but uh, the... Um, song Love Reaction, I think, made the main chart and got up to about 62 or something. But yeah, one, one of the things they're trying to do in these Boys Town charts is calling it something new. They're calling it high-energy music and trying to get people, I believe, to like the sort of music who don't particularly like the Boys Town image. Are you trying to break away from that image as well? Because well, not break away completely because, I mean, they're good fans and they're, they're constant fans. They stay with you, but, uh, I mean, if you want to make a, a career out of records, you don't. You need more than just... Uh, just the boys down the church and you need everyone you know well what about this outrageous image because it is quite outrageous as we're going to be seeing when you put it on so i mean i think with boy george now and marilyn and, and all of these people it's coming into its own now, ah, but you, you know? see they they are very asexual beings who are very attractive i mean they portray uh like grace jones marilyn and boy george are very attractive beings but the the female that you you personally is quite grotesque if you don't mind me saying so it's oh, quite well, a different i thought it was glamorous actually but you glamour so? over the top you know yeah. Is it sort of kitsch glamour you're aiming for then? Well, I think it's the kind of glamour that doesn't exist anymore, you know, that was around in the 50s when all the, with all the movie stars, anything that was very popular. But because of my size and things, it's a comedy aspect to it too, you know, and also a grotesqueness too. Are you, are you taking the rise out of women a bit? Oh, no, not at all. I mean, uh, uh, not at all. <laughs> no, I don't want any trouble with any women's groups or anything. No, it's just uh, strictly for comedy and to entertain people and to, to make them laugh mainly. Do you, think, do you think you'd be such a famous entertainer if you didn't use this aspect of dressing up as no. a certain religious room? No. No. And doesn't that make you feel a bit insecure that you no, need all the makeup? No, because I created the character, so I mean, it is a very big part of me, you know. Uh, I think uh, with any of them, I, like with Boy George, with all of his makeup, I don't think he would be anything either. I mean, it's, a, it's all gimmicks in show business, isn't it? I mean, uh, uh, with uh, with all of your big movie stars, each one had a gimmick. Each uh, big rock stars had a gimmick. I mean, the Beatles had long hair. There was more talk about their hair than there was about their music. I mean, Mick Jagger wore little girls' dresses and Mary Jane's shoes, and there was more talk about that than his music. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Your 